How do I transfer my shareholdings in my limited company to my children? Hi, I'm Kimberly Shapcock, qualified chartered accountant, property investor and entrepreneur. Let's sit down and have a chat. You've got a limited company, but it's just in your names. Maybe you, or maybe your husband um, or wife and yourself. Now, at this point, you may say, well, I've got children and they're now getting a little bit older, which therefore means it may be time where you're thinking, actually, I'd like to transfer some of the shareholdings of the company into the children. And that's great tax planning. It's great for inheritance tax. However, there are some tax implications. So let's have a talk through the process of how we go about transferring things from your name into your children's name. And from that point of view, how you can plan things in an appropriate manner to mitigate where possible the tax implications. From an inheritance tax point of view, gifting any shares falls under the position of a pet, which is a potentially exempt transfer. So as long as you're living for another seven years, you've got no issues with inheritance tax. And actually transferring into your children's name is a great way of passing generational wealth down and hopefully avoiding having too much tax to pay at the point of your demise. So what do we need to do to get this process rolling and start looking at transferring things? Well, the first step is probably how old are your children? And I tend to not be doing this before they're around the age of 16 because there are certain restrictions such as lending, if you're getting lending, where they don't like lending to people who are under 18. So if you've got 16 to 18 year old minority shareholders, they're probably going to ignore that fact. However, I would recommend checking with your lender or your broker before going ahead and doing anything like this to check that you're not actually going to cause yourself more problems by doing this transfer. However, as they approach 16, 18, they'll be over that age. So theoretically, it should become less of a problem. And at this point, if they are minority shareholders, they should get ignored for lending purposes, or they may want to get full heartedly involved in the property business. And if that's the case, then they can get involved again fully and get involved in the financing side of things as well. One thing to consider is you can't obviously choose your children's partners in the future. And there is that risk that potentially there is a breakdown in a marriage or something like that, where there may be a claim against the company because of a child's marital situation. It's something I mentioned, however, it shouldn't hold you back. It's one of those areas that hopefully, if you've taught your children to be responsible in their decisions, it shouldn't necessarily be an issue and you can obviously address that if anything were to come in the future. Let's therefore have a look at the process. And there's a few steps to this process that we need to go through. The first of those steps being the valuation of the company. So you need to look at how much is the company worth? And this will depend what you have in that company. So do you have like five properties? and you have bought them outright. So basically the company is probably worth the five properties value at the point that you're looking at doing the transfer. Or is it you've got five properties, but you've got mortgages on all of those. So you've just got the equity of the 25% mortgage in it. Or are you on the next extreme where you've got mortgages and then you've also got investor loans. So actually the property company is not worth an awful lot at this point, because if you were to sell all the properties and pay off all the investors, you'd be left with pretty much what you started with. So the valuation of that company is going to depend on what you've been doing in that company. Now, either way, you'll need to get some sort of valuation documented so you've got the evidence, should there be any questions, of what you have done in terms of doing this transfer. The valuations office may ask questions if they're not satisfied with what they are seeing. As we've said, the shares can be gifted to the children or child at whatever value and as this would for, uh, form a pet, a potentially exempt transfer, there is no inheritance tax that we need to consider at this point apart from if anything were to happen to you within seven years of the transfer. If it's all 
passes through and nothing happens over those seven years, then it's completely exempt from inheritance tax. As a transfer would be a gift and there's no cash changed hands, there's going to be no stamp duty implications for it, which is fabulous news because again, it just saves another layer of tax. The number of shares and the value that is transferred is likely to be determined by either the proportion you're looking at transferring or it might be a specific value. Now, this can be chosen by you in essence, so there is no requirement of whatever value you transfer. Now, this may depend on the valuation of the company. So if the company is valued at zero, then you can ch transfer whatever proportion you'd like to transfer. If the company is valued at a million, then you may be more limited because you may not want to be paying capital gains tax on the transfer or that might be what you want to do, but you may be limiting how much you want to transfer. As individuals, we all have a capital gains tax allowance of 12,300. So you as the person gifting those shares would still have to take into consideration the 12,300. Now, obviously, if there is more than one of you, so it may be you and your spouse have got a shareholdings in the company and you own 50-50 of them, and you may want to change some of them to a daughter, some of them to a son, it may be each of you can transfer 10, 12,000 of value to each child, which works very nicely. Or if you've only got one child, you could transfer up to 24,600 with no capital gains tax implications. But again, it depends on the value of the company and what proportion you're wanting to transfer. For lending purposes, you may want them to have no more than 5% at this point, or you might actually be happy for them to go up to 25, 30% and have a third of the company compared to yourselves. This is where the planning and the strategy comes into this sort of approach. And you need to have a look at what you want to do now, what you want to be doing over the future. So you might do something now, you might do something in two, three years, you might do something in five years. It's up to you and it's just looking at what the best options are for you and your family to preserve the wealth that you have created in your property company. The transfer would fall within capital gains tax. So this means it may need to be reported on your income tax return in the tax year that the transfer happens. If it falls under the 12,300 allowance, then you'll need to just do the calculation so you know you're happy that there isn't any capital gains tax, but that probably won't actually appear on your capital on your income tax return. If it goes over that amount, then there will be some capital gains tax to be paid and that will get dealt with on your income tax return. Ideally, a lot of the time, we try and make this as cash neutral as possible, but sometimes there may be a minimal amount of cash actual tax that may need to be paid to make this work for you and your family. A share transfer form will need to be completed to show that one person has transferred their shares from their name into another person's name. And then that share transfer form will need to be retained with the statutory books of the company, wherever that they are maintained, whether they are held by yourself or whether your accountant holds them on your behalf. The change in shareholding will then get reported on your confirmation statement when that is done at company's house. If you need that to be updated any sooner with company's house, then you'll need to do your confirmation statement earlier. And this may be the case if you're going through lending and they want to see exactly what has happened with the shareholding, which may be different to what you're telling them to what they can see on company's house. This is not a problem. It just means that your confirmation statement date will be different to what it was originally and it will bring it forward. It costs you the £13 confirmation statement fee, but that may be preferable just to make sure that any lending is dealt with rather than having issues from that point of view for £13. I would again highlight the fact that if you're going to be making some of the changes that are discussed in this video and transferring your shareholding to other family members, that you do just need to check the lending side of things. It's very crucial to make sure the financing of your business is set up as well as the tax efficiency is dealt with. So please do speak to your finance brokers to check that this works through from that point of view, depending what your intentions are with the business. 
If you are simply at a point where you want to be reducing any inheritance tax liability, it may not be an issue. If you are looking at expanding your business further, then you definitely need to make sure that the financing side of the business is taken care of as well. A final takeaway is to really look at what your intentions are for the future, how you want to spread the wealth and move the generational wealth hopefully forward for your family. Look into your crystal ball, which as we all know is very uncertain, to see what you think the future holds, to try and make sure that any changes in your structuring, in your shareholdings are set up for now and the future. If you need to do any share reclassifications, then check out the video on doing a share reclassification so that you can have everything set up and ready to go as you move the shareholdings around. Hopefully today you understand how you can move your shareholdings from yourself to your children and what you need to do to go about that process. If you have any questions, then please do leave a comment. Please like this video and please subscribe to the channel. And let's make tax less taxing.